Hello and welcome to day eight. So it's been a really exciting week as everyone comes back from leave. Now a couple of things have been happening um, around this space. I see that there's a lot of news around uh, with what Microsoft's doing. Um, you know, chat GDP is a big, big thing and Microsoft has announced that they're going to merge that technology into their Bing search engine. Should be very interesting to watch around, um, you know, the search space, especially um, Google and what they will do in response to this. Anyway, that's not really what I want to talk about. What I want to talk about is I had a call earlier this week from a longtime um, associate. They've been working with migrating all of their content from um, some servers that got sitting in their office to Office 365. And one of the interesting points that he made when we were having this conversation was that they didn't go through enough pain when they transitioned um, to 365. And I'm going, well, what do you mean? He said, well, we're still doing things the way we used to when we had file servers and file shares and all that sort of stuff. And without that pain, we haven't changed the way we do things. And this is an interesting point in that when we're moving from um, one environment to a new environment that has a different paradigm or a different way of working, we need to think about well, how we're going to transform our processes and our systems. And this is really, really important when it comes to things like Microsoft 365 because it's now cloud-based in terms of how it works. Now, for email, no change because email actually was born in the cloud. Yes, 30 plus 40 years ago, it was started when only the ISPs or the, the service providers would actually have the email server infrastructure built out. Um, we then, um, as enterprises, brought this to putting in our own little data centers. Now we put it back where it really belongs. So emails really haven't changed. But the way we manage files, especially via a file server, is quite different. Um, especially when you're going from using a file share or a normal file um, navigation tool, like um, File Explorer or Finder on Mac, um, to now using web browser. Now, don't get me wrong, there's um, tools like uh, OneDrive um, that will synchronize all of this stuff to give you the best of both worlds. But there's certain limitations and there's certain things that we need to consider and we lose out a lot of the capabilities of 365 in terms of content management. You know, be able to do um, document control type things where you need to check documents out, check them in, have minor and major um, versions, approval processes, and a whole host of other capabilities. Um, the other thing that, uh, that we've got to look to is the idea of what SharePoint does with files in that there's all this additional metadata. Think of it properties, um, additional bits of data or bits of information that's associated with a file. You know, you'll see this realized when you look at um, 365 through, um, through you know, being able to add columns and such like. And there's, there's a whole advanced capability that's sort of hidden behind the scenes that most people don't understand. What that allows you to do is to be a little bit more um, smarter around some of this is that you can get some of the properties that are embedded within, say, a Word document that you can use as a field inside of a document so you can actually um, update things automatically based on a property and it goes and updates all those things um, throughout the document. Um, but you can expose those into SharePoint. And when you expose those into SharePoint, we can do two things. One, we can push data back um, into SharePoint, but we also can bring data down into the document. And now we're starting to build this rich data set. Um, going going on and allows us to think differently around how we manage security, how we manage um, files in general. And we don't have to think that we're restricted to, you know, three or four or five arbitrary network drives that we used to have. We can now create multiple sites depending on our various use cases. For example, you could create a different site for every single one of your clients. Not only do you get a cool document library, but you get teams can be plugged in there as well. You can get a planner board associated with that. Um, and you can get various other lists and other attributes. And it's all wrapped in this one security object that allows people to have access. And it's a portable. It can be become portable. 
um, for that. And it's just a single object. You can invite your external party in. It starts to become very powerful. But if you have it in the standard file share paradigm, you miss out on all of that. You don't have that capability. So the point of this particular video is to say that when you're moving stuff from, say, an on-prem or to a cloud or from one system to another system, look for the opportunities to change. That's going to involve some pain associated with that because any sort of change can be painful, some less so, some more so. And how are you going to manage that transition? Because if you're thinking that you can move from one system to another and not change a thing, all you're going to do is create long-term pain and problems and other things that you're going to have to deal with later. You're going to have to pay back the the debt, if you like. We call this technical debt. You're going to have to pay that back later. So don't be afraid of experiencing a little bit of short-term pain when you're transitioning from one system to another. There should always be some change. And just make sure you manage it well.